Hello and welcome back to another Random Wednesday episode. Now, as you know, I try to keep this channel as educational as possible, but really, I'm like any one of you. I have a computer and I have weird computer problems at times. And like most of you, I try to actually Google to see what a solution could be. So recently, I encountered this really strange problem that had also a really strange explanation. In this video, I'm going to cover two main things. First, what the problem I'm facing actually was and, you know, some understanding of why it happens. And then I'm going to actually move on to talk a little bit about the solution. And in doing so, explain something else about your computer that you may or may not know. So yeah, I guess what I'm trying to tell you is this will not follow the format of your usual video. Instead, it's really just me talking about how I bumbled through a bunch of stuff and, you know, just my learning experiences from the entire event. But, well, I guess that's enough of an introduction. Let's jump right into the episode after the break. This is 0612 TV. Welcome aboard. Once again, hello and welcome to 0612 TV. So, what's this problem I keep talking about in the intro? Well, that is the problem of tearing. Tearing is an artifact you see when you actually play back video. And instead of actually jumping in to describe the issue to you, what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to show you a simulation of this in effect. So anyway, as you know, I recently released a ring light video and one of the shots I used was this particular panning shot. Now, on screen, I saw this terrible artifact every time I tried to play back this video. And you can probably see it here. Now, to be honest, this isn't the first time I've seen this happen. In fact, I've seen this happen with every single video I've played back. It's just that this was the last straw because I was so convinced that it was a really smooth motion. I really liked the shot when I, you know, played it back on my camera. So I wasn't very happy when my computer decided to break it like that. So that was actually when I went on a googling journey to find out, you know, what on earth the problem actually was. The reason why tearing happens is because your screen and whatever hardware is actually rendering the video is doing things at different speeds. So in a little bit more detail, here's actually what's happening. Your screen has a refresh rate. Essentially what that means is the screen will redraw itself a certain amount of times per second. Now typically this value is 60. In other words, every second, your screen actually updates 60 times. And of course, as you would imagine, each refresh does not happen all at once. It needs to go from the top to the bottom. And well, you'd expect this to happen very quickly. But as I said, it should not happen all at once. It's still gonna go, you know, kind of sequentially over a short period of time. Then we have the video decoding process. Now, essentially what that is, is it's just going through the video, right? The video is a whole bunch of frames. It's just reading out individual frames and telling the display driver to display that on screen. Now, as it stands, these two things are not related to each other. Your screen can refresh at whatever rate it chooses. The video will update at whatever rate it chooses. And these two things don't affect each other. And that is why there is a problem. Because these two things are not aware of each other, one can happen while the other is happening halfway. What do I mean? Take for example, well, you're playing back a video. Now imagine what happens if your screen was refreshing halfway and then midway, your video decoder actually says, hey, update the image. So what are you gonna get? For the first half of the frame, you're gonna draw whatever is there, and then an update is gonna happen at this point, and the rest of what you see on screen is actually the new frame. So essentially you're seeing two frames on screen at the same time, one part of it happening above the line where you know the update was made and the other frame happening below the line. In fact, this exactly characterizes what happens during tearing. In short, your screen is actually updated mid-refresh, causing this problem where, well, basically half the screen is showing all the data. That's exactly what was happening to me and you can see it in the simulation Essentially, the top half of the image kind of lags behind. And that's exactly what happens because the lower half is actually updated with the new image. So how do we fix this? Well, one of the most common solutions is actually vertical synchronization. Or in short, we call it V-Sync. Conceptually, it is extremely simple. Just don't allow anything to update the screen while you are mid-refresh. 
Only after the refresh is complete are all the updates made. All the updates only have that little window to finish doing their job because when the next refresh starts, they are not allowed to kick in until that entire process finishes. But well, it turns out that implementing vSync isn't the easiest thing in the world. And the reason for that is because now the software doing the drawing needs to be aware of when the refreshes start and finish. In other words, the software needs to have an idea of what the hardware is doing. I had no access to vSync whatsoever because I had the Windows DWM off. DWM stands for the Desktop Window Manager and you probably know it very well. It is of course one of the things that go into making those cute transparent blurry borders work. Now I had this feature off for ages because I believe that switching it off actually increases performance slightly. And since now I was faced with this entire tearing issue and that DWM was the only way to fix it, I had to actually sit down and take a long hard look at whether or not I was going to re-enable this feature. I also wanted to study how much of a performance hit you would actually incur if you ran DWM. And basically these were my findings. Here's some quick information about how displaying stuff on screen works. In memory, your entire screen is just an image or to use the more correct technical term, it is a buffer. At its simplest, all you need is one buffer. Every program that is running will basically take turns to update their portion of the buffer, you know, wherever their window is on screen. Every time your screen needs to refresh, your graphics card simply goes to memory, extracts the entire buffer, and paints that on screen. In fact, before Windows Vista, that is Windows XP and earlier, that's how they did their job. And that is also the reason why you actually got those trippy little effects when a program stops responding. Obviously, when a program stops responding, it also stops drawing itself on screen. And what happens is when you're dragging another window on top of that stuck window, well, it's not redrawing itself to cover up the parts that, you know, got previously drawn on. Now, starting from Windows Vista, the DWM actually took screen drawing to a whole different level. Instead of having one big buffer for every program to write to, now every open program is actually a plane in a 3D space. In other words, every single window maintains its own buffer. These buffers are actually drawn as texture maps onto the planes. And to display the final state of your entire screen, DWM actually composites all those individual planes together. And in doing so, it forms one final flat 2D buffer, which it then paints on screen. As you would expect, what DWM does is significantly more complicated in a graphical sense, since it needs to composite a bunch of windows together. However, there is one unit on your computer specifically designed to handle 3D operations, and that is the graphics card, or GPU. In fact, at a macro level, that is exactly what enabling or disabling DWM does. If you have it on, you're using your GPU to render your desktop and all your windows. If you have it off, the rendering happens on your CPU instead. But remember what I mentioned earlier about vSync? The drawing process should happen on the hardware portion. And when you have DWM off, essentially that is not happening. vSync essentially did not work at all, even if I went into my media player and tried to turn it on, it just wouldn't work because all the rendering is happening at the software level. Just a quick footnote about performance. Yes, it is true that when DWM is on, your computer is technically doing more work. But in fact, because of the way things are laid out, you actually get a performance boost. Well, it's probably not a noticeable performance boost, but at least mathematically it is a performance boost all the same, and here's why. With DWM off, essentially what you're doing is you're telling your processor to actually do all the drawing. What that means is while your GPU that is your graphics card is actually sitting there idling, your CPU has to devote a certain number of cycles every second just to draw and refresh the entire screen. With DWM on, essentially what you're doing is now you're actually offloading the screen drawing process to your graphics card. Your graphics card handles all the nitty gritty. At the same time, you're actually not bogging down your CPU with you know having to bother with drawing the screen. And so every second you free up some cycles that could go into processing the actual things you wanted to process. And there you have it. That was my entire learning process with, you know, DWM, screen tearing. During this time, I learned a lot about, you know, like how Windows does things under the hood. 
And also, you know, you get that appreciation of how things can be complicated, even if, you know, it's stuff you take for granted. As things stand, I now have my DWM on, I no longer have any tearing issues, and as an added bonus, we all now get to enjoy the little blurry borders again. I wouldn't say my computer is running faster because I have DWM on, but I can definitely say for sure that it is not running any slower. But yeah, that pretty much sums up my entire learning process. Well, that's all there is for this episode. Thank you very much for watching. You're watching 0612 TV. Hello, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, remember that I appreciate every like, favorite, and comment you give me. If you'd like to see more from me in the future, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. And for more updates outside of YouTube, don't forget to follow me on Twitter at 0612 TV. Once again, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.